All right, all right. What's going on, ladies, gentlemen, and beautiful people? I'm going to share my screen real quick. All right. Let me know if you can see my screen. Type 111 in the chat if you can see my screen. We are about to begin. Sorry for the wait. Sorry for keeping y'all held up, but uh, we are good. We're ready to go. So let me just see if you guys can see my screen and hear my voice. 111 in the chat, please. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so at least at least y'all can hear me, y'all can see my screen, and we are ready to go. All right. All right, going to get this uh link out to some of my some of my partners and stuff, and uh you know, we'll get started momentarily. All right, and almost done here. All right. Okay, here we go. All right. So, uh, first and foremost, welcome to tonight's uh, to tonight's trading session. Um, it's me and your boy Ness, and we are going to take a look at the markets. We're going to see what's going on, and if we can see some plays, right? We're going to point it out so we could get paid. We could trade, we get paid, all that good stuff. All right. So, uh, first and foremost, before we even uh, begin right we're gonna take a look at the economic calendar first so we're gonna go over here to forexfactory.com and uh, as you know you know today is a holiday in the united states columbus day or indigenous people day you know different states have a different holiday name for it but you know columbus day and also with the canadian uh on the canadian dollar is also a holiday for them as well uh, and so, you know, not too much activity over here on USD, light impact at 9 a.m. in the morning, medium impact at 3 p.m. So later in the New York session, and then at the closing of the New York session, there was a light impact as well, but really nothing uh, for, for tonight in the economic calendar um, pertaining to the Asian session, uh, the, you know, obviously the Tokyo session slash Sydney session, which is this time right now okay um we do see that the china one uh you know had a couple of updates all right that's cool for those that trade the one you know different different brokers different prop firms different exchanges you are able to trade instruments that include uh china one depending on you know which one you're in i know uh for most u.s brokers um, you know, sometimes it's a little more limited, but uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna just ditch the ditch the fundamentals. There's really nothing going on today uh, as far as the fundamentals go, but we are going to take a look at the technicals. Okay, so we're gonna x this out. We're gonna see what's up. 
We're going to see what's going on. So it is uh, Tokyo Session. So I like to start with JPY, you know, pairs. And I was analyzing uh, AUD JPY earlier. Um, as you can see, the market, you know, hit a high. All right. And then it started to basically zigzag. That's how the market moves. The market moves in zigzags. If it's moving up, it's moving in a zigzag. If it's moving down, it's moving in a zigzag. So all these impulse moves and, you know, all these trends basically is the same thing all over again. You're going to have the market hit a high and then the market goes down. Then the market hits a low and then it goes up. And so the cycle continues, the cycle continues. And so what we're doing is we're analyzing in a way where we're anticipating the manipulation because, you know, as you already know, all right, Forex is a decentralized um, is a decentralized industry, okay? So there's no centralized point, it's decentralized, and the majority of it are made up by the big banks, the big institutions, the hedge funds, you know, basically um, a lot of institutions with some extreme, extremely high capital. It's a big tug of war between the retail traders and the big corporate giants. And for us as retail traders, our hope is we just get in and get out of the market with the bag yes we can identify patterns in the market but so can the institutions so we're going to first wait for that manipulation to occur before we decide to dive in um and you know take advantage of of the market and the moves that it does make now over here on AUD JPY, um i'm just going to bring out the fib real quick we're going to go from wick to wick, okay? We're going to go from wick to wick. All right? And we're going to see what kind what kind of what kind of opportunities the market has for us. We we'll see how the market plays out. Let me zoom this in. All right, so the market is going to give us some reaction points. Okay, we're going to see the market give us some reaction points over here. Let me uh, change these settings over here. There's a different um, Trey Locker account that I'm using. Uh, go into the style and let me bring this to the right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So as we can see, when we go over here from wick to wick, swing low to swing high. Um, and we're here on the four hour on AUD JPY. Okay, so uh, we could see that the market definitely reacted at certain points. So right over here, it was dancing around the 786 zone right here. Okay, so it was acting as a resistance for a little bit and then it broke out of that, retested and went to try the next levels. All right, we see it reacted at these levels before, right at these zones, 618 right over here and it just continued to go up so it's definitely reacting right around these zone points over here and so what we could see over here is the market hit this high all right came back down to the 236 and now it's working its way up and once it crosses this then we already know this is basically going to continue going the opposite way um it's gonna it's gonna you know just continue to shoot up possibly break and retest and all that good stuff so we can anticipate you know a big move to happen over here on the AUD JPY um, so we can lay some traps for a buy and that's basically what I'm analyzing right now let's go into the lower time frames and let's get rid of this fib all right let's go into the lower time frames all right let's go with the one hour and then we're gonna look at the 15 right after because we want to get into some specific points, right? Is it ready to break right now or not? So based on what I'm looking at, all right, right over here, this looks like, you know, a, a touch, 
a touch right over here to my block and it started to deflect going down, um, but it's still pushing up. So whenever you see things like this, all right, you can see, all right, the markets are going in in certain directions, right? You can see that eventually it's going to be forming this triangular uh, pattern. And so when the market gets cornered, right, uh, like a wounded animal, if a wounded animal feels cornered and, you know, it can't run, nowhere, it's going to go wild, right? So basically, you can expect a breakout to happen, it's usually about five touches to a triangular situation before a breakout occurs. And so, uh, so right over here, um, we can anticipate a breakout, but for right now, we could take we could take a little bit of advantage right over here if we want to get into some quick scalps, we get into some quick plays. So, for example, right over here, if we get into this reaction point right over here, get into a buy, we can expect it to go right over here, um, and we could go in for a quick a quick profit. If we want to play more of the long term game, then we'll wait for this to completely break this block. And, uh, and then we could catch the break and retest. Uh, but for right now, we can take advantage of a small uh, of a small opportunity right over here. So what I'm going to do is bring out the long position tool right over here. If I'm interested in buying this right at this level right over here, okay, then I can see we can... We can shoot for like solid 45 pips right over here. And we can risk. Keep it a two to one risk to reward ratio. All right, so 22 pip risk for 45 pip gain. All right, we could do something like that if we want to go for a quick profit. If we want to go for a much bigger profit, all right, then we'll anticipate the break and retest, and we can really take this uh, to the moon. Um, so a couple of the plays that I called last week, uh, we did some really, really good stuff over here on my live, on my live calls, my live sessions, um, and Euro USD. all right, we scored 46 pips. USD JPY, we scored like 100 plus on this one. Let's see, let me pitch this down. All right, yeah, so this one right here was, uh, was 100 pips on USD JPY um, that we caught. So basically the same kind of mindset that I have towards these things. EJ was another, I think this one was uh, 97 pips that we caught. Caught, uh, oh no, 99 pips, 100 pips basically. I already caught 99 pips there. And this is all trades for Monday last week, right? Um, because there's not so much economic activity happening today in the market, according to the fundamentals, we're not really gonna have that volatility that, volatility that we need to really go crazy on some of these plays. Um, we, we called the trade over, uh, how many pips is this going for? There's 150, but we didn't complete this one. I think we stopped right around over here where I told people to pull out and profit. It was like 75% to the take profit, uh, price point right over here. But, uh, but right while we over here on AUD JPY, we can, you know, get, get by with, uh, you know, with a quick play. A quick uh a quick opportunity or we could do we could go big okay we could go big let's go on the let's go on the four hour so i'll give you a small play and i'll give you a bigger play depending on your trading style like if you just want to get in and out with the bag all right we could you know take advantage take advantage of opportunity right now if we really want to uh you know if we really want to go crazy on this we can so if we are waiting for that break and retest right and let's just say that let me use my ghost oh yeah i don't know if i have it uh here 
Okay, yeah. All right. All right, so let's just say this comes, break this level, re retest right around here, and continue to go up. Okay, maybe not that perfect of a scenario. Let me switch this up real quick. I like to use more neutral colors um, because uh, if I just see red, green, or green, blue, I'm automatically thinking buy, sell based on that. So there's, you know, something there with the colors and psych and trading psychology. I just like to use uh, neutral colors whenever I do approach the market. So my approach to the market is just a little different. It's not like everyone else's, but it's something that works for me. I've been trading for almost 10 years. So, you know, something that I developed for myself and you're going to develop your own way on how you trade. And that's cool. You know, learn from the masters, learn from the greats to become greater, um, but with your own twist, with your own swag, right? So uh, from right over here, um, this is what I'm projecting. I'm projecting that the market eventually is going to break this block. It's going to break this point over here and then come back down to then, you know, retest and then shoot up. And at that point, you know, we can look to the past whenever we uh, whenever we are looking to the left, the market is giving us a story, right? It is telling us what the market may just do next so let me get into a higher one let's go for the daily right over here just for a second just so we can um just so we can mark up that high that i'm going to be going for okay so right over here would be the take profit Here's where the stoppage would be. This is way too ambitious. So we'll keep it. Yeah, look at these levels. Okay. This is interesting. All right. Let's bring it right around over here. A high time frame level right here. When it comes to your entries and when it comes to your approach in the market, the more, uh, the more meticulous you are, the better. Long story short, okay? All right, so from what I can see over here, I do think that level is a little too ambitious there. Let me get rid of my ghost feed. Space it on the wick. All right, so we get this uh, break and retest. Probably right here to this uh, to this point. 
109, uh, 102.950, right around over here. to be like spread below that. All right, maybe not a two to one risk reward ratio, but a 1.75 risk reward ratio. Don't wanna to be too crazy, don't wanna to be too ambitious. We wanna catch it, right? Like that's the whole point, for us to catch profits, you ever been in a situation where this happened to me, you know, a lot during the years, but um, where you set your take profits, right? Whether it's TP1, TP2 or whatever, and the market is in a profit zone. There's like 50% to your TP, 75% to your TP, 80% to your TP, and then it just go ass backwards. And let's, let's just say you're not monitoring your trades like that, um, you know, to be trailing your stops and all that good stuff. Well, if you're not really monitoring your trade or worse, you have, you know, you're trading on your phone and then your phone dies and you're doing a bunch of stuff um, and that could be pretty drastic. Right. So um, by not being too ambitious, we could just get in, slip some traps. Right. And, and leave with the bag. Like that's the whole point. Right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave two setups tonight for AUDJPY. And then we're going to go and we're going to move on to another currency pair and see, you know, what other opportunities we can spot. So we'll do a quick opportunity and we'll do a longer term opportunity for a chance to capture um, some more pips. OK, so let me let me jot this stuff down right over here. Let me give you some of these levels. All right, so this AUDJPY. All right, and there's going to be some buys. All right, so right now, the one that's active right now, or the one that's right around that entry zone right over here, this is not really, uh, this does not require pending order. This is a market execution, right? So I'm just going to leave it like this. Buy execution, this for the quick. It's for a quick opportunity, okay? And this is what we're gonna do. Let's make sure we fix this up. Let's make it bigger, okay? All right, so the entry point is at market. If you're just jumping in or let me just give you a specific price point. It's 100. 100 100.560. All right, stop loss, 100.337. All right, and this is a stop loss. Twenty two pips. All right, and take profit. 
101012, sorry, 101. One hundred one, oh twelve, forty five, forty five pips. Two to one risk to reward ratio. Okay, and again, this for a quick opportunity right over here. All right. So there's this one right here. Let me copy and paste this in the chat so you can have it. Someone asked, hey, are we doing binary options too? Yeah, I like to do that towards the end of the session. I like to take care of the of you know the forex positions and stuff first. And then uh we'll go for the quick action of binary at the end. All right, so this is for the quick opportunity right here. And then for the bigger play, all right, for the bigger play is going to be a little different. AUDJPY. This obviously we're going to wait. We're going to anticipate, um, you know, the market breaking this block over here and then retesting it and then shooting up okay um so at this point I, you know what i might even adjust this because just based on my levels based on what i'm looking at right now I, i'm thinking i'm just gonna base the entry right over here at 101.618 that's exactly where that line was Okay, so I'm just going to adjust a little bit. And the reason why is because you want to leave some space, right? Because, you know, the institutions already know um, that people may just be anticipating this, okay? They may just wait for that break and retest and you know, try manipulating all that good stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this set. Um, JV, you need, to, you need to get up out of here, kid. Daddy. Go. <laughs> I'll play with you later. Why are you naked, man? Go over there. Go take a bath. Yo, you naked right now, man. You gotta, you gotta get out of here. <laughs> Sorry. <right. laughs> it's bath time for one of my sons. I have three kids. I got three sons. And that's my middle one right there. He's uh <laughs> he's he's attached. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. Ariana writes, God bless your family, G. I appreciate you. All right. All right, so uh, AUDJPY, like I said, I, I see, a, you know, I, I peeped that level right here, 101.618. So we're going to do a buy stop on this one, right? Because the market is coming from the south, and it's going up. It's traveling north. So we want to capture it like that. So it's going to be a buy stop. Um, if the market was above where I wanted to buy and we're waiting for it to come down before it bounce back up, that would be a buy limit. But we're going to do a buy stop um, for this order right over here. So AUDJPY buy stop. All right. And let's read the levels over here. Uh, this is 100, 816 for the stop loss. All right. Let me just put this in the line below because this is the first level I noticed. 100.816. All right, let me put the entry point over here. I know I'm a little backwards sometimes. Uh, okay, 101.618, right? 101.618. That should be memorable, right? Because, you know, fibs, the, the golden ratio, right? 618, that should be memorable, all right? And the TP on this 
look, we could play it however you want to play it. If, we, if we're doing a TP1, TP2, this is what I would do. Okay, um, I would do something simple for TP1. Like we could have it right at uh, 102.300. Which is a round number institutional level. The market is most likely going to gravitate towards that before it reacts. But you know, if that's one of our zones for TP, then you know, cool, we can do that, right? So TP one, we can have it right over here. We can have a set TP one. Uh, so one hundred two point three hundred. One hundred two point. Well, 2.300 and let's do uh, TP2 over here. All right, TP2. We'll do the 150 risk reward ratio. One oh two point eight two six. And right over here, TV three would be the full two to one restore ratio. So one oh three point two two eight. Well, let me adjust something with the first one. Nah, I think I'd rather have what I had there already, you know, just a little slack over here on the stop loss. Just a little slack right there. But okay, this is what I have over here. All right, so this is almost a one-to-one, -one, right? TP1, uh, TP2 is is, uh, is 1.5 risk war ratio, all right? Um, and TP3 is a two-to-one risk war ratio fully. So, you know, here's the entry point stop loss and the three take profit price points if you want trailing stops. Right, but this is the bigger play. Okay, so let me just uh, highlight this. The bigger play. Okay. So we get over here. All right, this is 160 pips basically. Um, Eddie is asking with the TPs, do you move your TPs or do you make three trades to have three TPs? So basically, you trail your stops. Now, um, certain platforms have the features for this. Um, but some you have to just do it manually yourself. And the way it works is this. Once the market is in the profit zone after your trade activates, then you have to go and manually update your stop loss to be the original entry price, right? And so this is how you start trailing your stops. So let's just say the market, um, you know, uh, uh, now you now you're adjusting 
as the market is is elevating, you're adjusting your stop losses and your take profit. So that way, if things go south, you are still profitable, right? So eventually, you can move your stop loss to your TP1, your stop loss to your TP2. And so so if the market is between TP2 and TP3, right? And uh, and let's just say it just it's just not hitting TP3 and it's going the other way and it's about to go south. Um, at least you can set your stop loss to TP2 and boom, you know, that's how you trail your stops. So that's that's like uh, basically that's basically how you manage your trade or how you want to manage your trades um, if you're actively managing them. Right. And that would be the thing to do. Now, some platforms have the ability to allow you to trail your stops, which is cool. You know, it, w it wasn't really a thing until. Um, until I would say, you know, back in 2015, you know, we weren't really trailing stops like that from, from what I remember. Uh, but it started to be a thing, um, shortly after that, like around 2016, so like as Forex was getting more and more and more popular, um, you know, trailing stops were becoming, you know, a thing that more and more people were getting aware of, you know, at the time. Uh, when I joined, so I could only speak from my experience, but that's how that works, Eddie. Okay, all right, and so uh, all right, so we got these plays over here, and if you are unfamiliar with how to execute or how to put in the order, for example, um, is actually really simple. So if you're dealing with a broker um, that uses Trade Locker. It's uh, it's it's really you know it's really cool. So, um, it keeps it real simple because we are this is a trading view widget, and this is what makes it much more better and sexier as opposed to um, you know, MetaTrader. I'm not gonna lie, you know, MetaTrader to me is like dinosaur technology at this point. Like it's a thing of the past. It's nowhere near as interactive as TradingView is. So I like this platform. Trade Locker and all the brokers connected to Trade Locker, you know, is really is really uh, you know at, at an advantage point compared to you know uh, most brokers. But all right, let's just say we're gonna put in this. Um, I'm gonna do the two positions right over here. Let's first start off with the pending order, right? Which is this one, the bigger play, right? So at this point, if you if you're utilizing the Trade Locker, um, you know, uh, portal. Right, I'm going to go over here to pending, okay, and it's gonna ask me for the price. So you know, we can literally just copy and paste. Uh, wait a second, did I copy and paste? No, I didn't. Hold on, I got y'all right now. Let me copy and paste the bigger play right over here. All right, all right. So this is the bigger play, okay? So I'm just copying and paste, pasting that here, so it's easier for you to follow. All right, so uh, entry point 101.618, right? 101.618, okay, boom. All right, this is going to be a buy stop, okay? And we are going to do stop loss, of course, 100.816. 100.816, okay, and... Take profit is going to be sorry, I'm bugging. So uh the entry is 101.618. Sorry, sometimes whenever you get like an error message, double check your entry, your stop loss to take profit. It's probably one digit off. So that's what happened over here. I had it at 100.618, I had to change it to 101. 0.618. Little things like that do happen, so just double check. All right, and TP1, okay, is going to be 102.300 for me. So let's put it in here, 102.300, okay? And so uh, over here, look, you could click and uh, you could click this trail right over here, um, and you can, you know, select this feature to trail your stop loss again not every platform has this but the ones that do are really at an advantage point and then you just um decide how many lots you want to trade with and in this case because i'm shooting what is 160 pip uh play over here so uh at this point 160 pips 
Um, let's say I go in at, you know, two lots. All right. That's, uh, that's fair for, you know, this example. Okay. And so this will be a buy stop. And you know what I love? And I'm just pointing this out right now because I'm, I'm looking at this, right? Um, check this out. This automatically detected as a buy stop. All right. It's a pending order automatically detected as a buy stop. Um, in other platforms, I would literally have to manually enter buy stop because, because the market is below where we want to buy, right? So we will have to manually put it. If I had, if I had no idea what I was doing and I put buy limit, it wouldn't execute the order and I would be wondering why. But here on Trade Locker, it automatically detected what kind of buy entry is going to be in the pending order. This is impressive to me. So, you know, Listen, I haven't used Trade Locker like that. I'm old school. I, you know, I, I use, you know, MetaTrader. I even use brokers that, you know, have their own uh, uh, portal on their website. But I'm really impressed with Trade Locker. So, again, any broker connected to Trade Locker is really at an advantage situation. Uh, let me actually upgrade this just a little bit. Let me put 2.50 in this example, all right? And I'm going to execute the pending order right now, and it's going to let me know, all right? We're still, okay, boom. Confirm, yes. And there we go, all right? There's a pending order in place over here. So when the market hits this entry, po uh, this entry point, then the market will activate, right? Which is pretty cool. Now for the quick play, right? We have a quick play situation right over here. Let me zoom it in because I know it's a uh, small, you know, on your screen. Okay, so look at this point, because I haven't entered a trade yet, right? I can even set this. Well, if it was below the point over here, I could set it as a, as a, as a buy stop pending order if it does get a little bit more south which will probably be the better thing to do honestly because um you know anybody can basically tell that this is kind of following you know a small uptrend right over here so any institution can see that all right and uh oh look at this point of control look at this look at look at my market profile visible range let me get a little closer Okay, I saw the point of control was like right around here, which means that there's a lot of more volume coming into this price range. And notice it's around number 100.050, like right around this area. That's where the point of control is. So that's uh, institutional money right there. See if I bring it a little bit more this way. If the point of control switches up. Okay, so th this is what I could do just to be smart, just to be smart, right? Uh, just pay attention to the wicks, to the candle bodies and all that good stuff. See right here, all right? So if the market gets right over here to that, um, to that stop loss area, then cool. What I'll do is if it gets down over here, then I'll be looking to enter this as a buy pending order. So we could play it smart, all right? We could play this smart. We could activate it right now because uh, we know eventually it's going to, you know, come back to this block and uh, possibly, you know, break it and retest it and all that good stuff, which is why we got the bigger play waiting. Um, but, you know, we want to be real smart with this. We'll let the market do its um, ma manipulative stuff, um, and then we'll just catch this trade too as a quick lick. Quick lick in the market, you know, we just in and out with the bag. Um, look at the point of control shift right over here. This is interesting. So, you know, this will catch what your technical indicators and what your, you know, basic analysis will not catch. This is showing us volume, right? The money that's coming in, the most of the money is coming in at what price uh, range, right? Um, so this is a this is a good tool to use, especially if you're trading institutional style, you know, like me, um, because we're you know we're we're catching you know because we're catching big plays, you know we gotta trade like the institutions do. 
Uh, but I do see that it's an interesting point right over here. Ooh, I think I just might activate this right now. I might just activate this trade right here, right now. So I'm going to follow this right here. Okay, we're going to go in for another order. Okay, um, so now over here, I'm just going to enter just a straight buy, market buy. All right, we're going to put the stop loss in place. All right, so 100.337. 100.337 okay and take profit is going to be 101.012 okay all right and we can activate this because you know this is a quick play um i'm just gonna do something lighter i'll do uh just one lot in this example and i'll activate it just like that boom okay um and so, you know, here's one position that's currently active, right? And we have a pending order. Remember, the pending order is the bigger play, all right? That's the bigger play. Right over here, this is just a quick, a quick test of the market, um, but a quick move, you know, nothing too crazy. Uh, this right here is the, is the big dog, is the big play right here. That's the one right there. Um, if you want to manage your trade, just click on it, okay? And you can trail your stop as well right here you just click it this is already active i see so i'm just going to keep it just like that that's pretty dope all right and uh i'm gonna let this i'm gonna let this rock okay i'm gonna let this rock and we're gonna see how this plays out it is 9 50 p.m we spent a good deal of time on aud jpy all right so uh let me go do my binary thing Right, because I majority of my following for the last years, for the last you know five years has been my binary following. But I love to trade regular forex. That's how I got my start. All that good stuff. Um, so, gonna jump up in here and do a quick do a quick position. We we'll do a quick position right here. ADJPY says we will focus on that. But my approach on on this right here. There we go, option, okay. My approach on this over here is going to be a little different because, you know, I'm not, I'm not trading with the institutional mind in my mind right now. This right here, this approach is really get in and get out like immediately, within seconds, within, you know, a minute, two minutes, whatever, okay? Um, so from what I can analyze in the market right now, um, I am interested in entering a buy, obviously, but I want to catch it, you know, at the low point, at the low ticks right over here. So I'm going to wait for this to go a little bit lower, and then I'm going to go in real quick and beast on a trade. All right, let's do. All right, this is telling me straight up. Dollar amount, how much I'm risking and how much I'm making if I uh, if I win this position, right? So bottom line, this is straight up. There is no managing your trade really. Um, you either win or you lose. You know that's how that's how this works. You either in or out of the market with the bag or without the bag. You we could do something crazy like I could do some quick um, um, quick traps. What I like to call binary traps. So if I know the market is going to be between um, between certain levels, then I could put a buy and a stop at the same time, and it ain't nothing, really. Uh, so this will probably be smarter for me to enter a buy since it's much lower, uh, but it's just to show you quick examples of how this works. There are some binary platforms. I mean, there's some Forex platforms that do include binary, such as Dukascopy, which is... Uh, it's an A-list broker. Um, they have binary in their in their program as well. Not everyone does, um, and this is still like this is still kind of new, you know, in the trading space. When you really, you know, look at everything, um, it's it's pretty new in the trading space. All right, this is gonna be a quick flip for me right over here. So what? That was a one minute trade, and I just banked two uh, two thousand bucks on that example right over here all right here's another one 
And this is AUDJPY, you know, so so my institutional brain, right, for large pips, it's it's not in this, it's not in this trading style, right? So I have to I have to move away um, from the institutional large pip gathering mindset and just really go in on some, you know, quick play stuff, right? So look, that was another two racks right over here. Okay, so two racks, two racks. I lost this one, okay? That was 1250, okay? So here's one win. Help me recover some of the loss. Here's a second win to, to definitely secure me uh, in the profit, right? And so look, I've been trading for, you know, almost 10 years. Um, don't compare my chapter 10 with your chapter one. Um, don't do it, okay? Uh, but Again, different trading styles, different approaches. Um, you know, this all is good for us to really take advantage of of the plays that the market has for us. All right. So with that said, if you guys got any questions, you know, please let me know. I hope you guys really enjoyed the session. I felt like it was pretty informative. We just kind of stood on AUD JPY and that's OK. Um, there are a lot of people, you know, out there that, you know, they want to jump on every single possible symbol, instrument, asset, whatever you want to call it. Um, they just want to jump into all of them as much as possible. But there's some power in sticking to just one trading asset. I'll give you an idea, right? One of the first things I got exposed to as a trader, I rented an Airbnb. Um, it was me, a bunch of friends. This was like years ago. And, uh, and we were all, you know, doing like a mastermind. We were all doing something cool. And, um, and then we started to ask the owner questions. And the owner said that he owns a lot of these mansions in South Florida because of one thing. He only trades oil, right? So when I, when I learned about that, it blew my mind. I'm like, wait a second. So he mastered how to trade one commodity. And just from that, from just focusing on one commodity, right? That that he's you know gotten used to. He, you know, he's very competent in the levels and all that stuff of this one asset, this one commodity, he was able to build a fortune. So for a while, USD JPY was my oil, right? I, I love to trade JPY pairs. That is my oil, right? Uh and, and it's okay. You don't have to jump on every little single thing. If you want something that moves fast with a lot of momentum, yes, indices is definitely a way to go. I love it. I just, When I was analyzing the market today, I didn't really see, you know, too many plays that I could get in with today on indices because fundamental-wise, you know, it's a bank holiday. So there's not really a lot of volatility in the markets when you base on the economic calendar, really. Um, however, okay, you know, the next day is is already is already here, you know. So in a couple hours will be London session, and you know there's going to be some plays. But if you want fast momentum pairs or fast momentum assets, right, you can look beyond indices and you could go into trading commodities. You could trade gold. You could trade silver. Um, even crypto pairs, okay, move pretty quick. But if you really want something quick, then take a look at some exotic currency pairs like the United States dollar versus the South African rand, USD czar, euro czar. Um, you have all these other ones as well. So czar is not the only one. You also have the Turkish lira. You also have the Mexican peso. So, you know, there's a world of things out there. And, uh, you know, just dream, explore, discover. You know, obviously, everyone is, is here. Um, you know, a part of, of everything that we're doing with the firm and all that good stuff. Uh, but, you know, there's so many plays in the market. Take advantage of it. All right. Take full advantage of it. Start off with a demo account. If you don't know what you're doing or whatever, start off with demo. Or you could go live and just trade, you know, just trade with very light risks. Right. Um, I think it's better to, uh, you know, to just go with whatever you feel right in your gut, you know, learn from the greats to become greater. Don't uh, don't drive yourself crazy over the stuff and don't trade with desperation in your heart. Right. If you're trading out of desperation and not inspiration, you're already doing it wrong. Don't be don't be putting your 
Don't be putting your house. Don't be putting your rent. Don't be putting your car on any particular trade because what happens if if the market goes the other way, right? Then you get into a gambling mindset. Trading is not gambling. Trading is taking calculated risks. If you're not taking risks, it's not trading, right? You are gambling or you're insider trading, which insider trading is illegal, but, you know, obviously, you know, people in the upper echelons of government, you know, they, they can do whatever they want with uh, insider information. Um, so, you know, listen, there's levels upon levels upon levels. And then when you get to a point where you could become an accredited investor, right now, you can actually invest in companies outside of the market. Right. So there's always levels to this, always levels to this. So believe in yourself. Take your time. Right. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. OK, you're not going to be able to, uh, you know, don't overwhelm yourself. All right. It's OK. Learn from the greats. You got just Rob. You have Brat. You got Randy Mai. You have a lot of amazing individuals. All right. That are literally showing you the game. And then with my crew, you guys already know what's up. You know, we have all kinds of different, you know, masterminds. Um, we have every strong community. We have all these different tools. So listen, you know, the world is yours and everything in it. Just go and get it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this is valuable. I'll post up the recording. If you would like to see the recording for this, um, I just want to see who actually cares if I post the recording. Type 777 in the chat. If, if you're someone that, you know, would like to see the playback of this, type 777 in the chat. Um you know, if you want to like, kind of recap and learn from this experience. So I have, <laughs> all right, I have uh, Eddie just clear the trade. God is good, money. So I appreciate you. Um, Jared, you know, wants that recording, 777. So there's Eddie, so, so there's Ariagna, um, so there's Giovanni Pinto. All right, I appreciate you guys. So um, I'll post up the recording. I'll get with Rob. Um, and I'll post up the recording in, in our groups and stuff. So just, you know, hold fast, wait, you know, when it comes to Forex, especially, you just got to kind of, you know, set it and, and just, and just let it marinate. Okay. Let it cook. All right. Let it cook. Binary is different because we can get in, get out one minute, two minutes, we out. Right. Uh, but Forex is different and you know what? That's good. Slow cook right? Slow cooked meals are usually always the best, right? And so we got it, all right? Stay blessed, take care. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll post up the replay. Stay blessed. Peace.